Today we're looking at using professional audio equipment in the garage for listening to music. So I have a 400i system from Yamaha, which is this two speakers and the mixer that's on the uh, tool tray. Then we also have a, a Yorkville, that's a 10 inch powered sub, I'm not sure exactly what the model is. It's uh, fairly recent and it's 250 watts. So the 400i is 200 watts per channel and then it's 250 for the sub with a 10 inch speaker whereas the uh, 400i has uh, 1 inch compression drivers and 6 inch uh, woofers on it. So the neat thing about the 400i from Yamaha is that it has a, uh, a crossover built in so when you plug in a sub it cuts some of the uh, bass from going to the woofers and directs it down into the sub and uh, I guess uh, the other thing to keep in mind with the 400i system is you can't turn off any inputs. Like when I have my little digital radio connected to the uh, 400i, even when I have that channel turned down to zero, if I crank the amp, you can hear the uh, radio coming through. So if you don't want a signal coming through, you got to unplug it or turn it off or something because there's no off setting on the uh, 400i. Um, other than that, I guess because this is professional audio equipment, it's meant to be in a noisy environment, so you can hear the fans. On the 400i, the fan is always running. With the Yorkville down here, it's got a uh, a fan in it, but it hasn't doesn't seem to run all the time. It is used, so I got to verify that it's working correctly. But that's uh, where I'm at right now. So they have a newer Yamaha model that has Bluetooth in it so that you can hook up any Bluetooth audio device to stream to it. Whereas uh, this, being the 400i, it uses the big iPhone, iPod connector on it, which it has its benefits for some people. Like if you, if you have that equipment, it works. So my Jeep and my van both use that Apple connector, unfortunately. So I've bought a couple of these devices just for listening to music in them. So that works for me, but if you get a phone call or if you make a noise with your phone when you're playing music, you're going to hear it through the speaker, so it's going to be loud. So that's not ideal. And uh, so the neat thing about the 400i is because it's professional audio, it has uh, balanced audio inputs on it, so it'll cancel any noise that's picked up in the wiring if you run that kind of wiring. But it also does RCA connectors and 8th inch jacks. So instead of using the uh, digital audio out of here. You can use an 8th inch jack off of an Android phone or something like that and play into there. So that's kind of neat. There's no batteries in this. I'm sure other products are battery powered. If you want to go work on the sidewalks or whatever, or if you're just a traveling band and you need power where there isn't any, you can look elsewhere for other products for that. The uh, also have a Yamaha streamer here. So WFC 50. And it's kind of neat. It's a preamp. It has a couple inputs for it. It's got RCA inputs. It's got a uh, optical digital input in it. And uh, I guess that's the main inputs. And then it can also go on the internet. It can go onto your network and play music off of uh, that. And this is all stereo equipment, which was very intentional for me. I do not like surround sound equipment for listening to music. It's just a nuisance trying to get the settings correct. Then when you think you got it right, it screws up. So for a garage where you want to listen to music, stick with stereo. Don't go and buy some thousand watt home theater contraption because you're not going to be happy with it if it's surround sound. Like if you buy some old THX stereo system out of a theater, you can do that. But you're probably looking at putting new capacitors on it and reworking the circuit boards to make it work. So if you want to go too old, you're going to run into problems as well. And then they're very bulky as well. So I'm not going to play any music really, but with the 400i, I found that having a 10 inch sub really completes the system and they're not expensive. So I would consider that. So when he talked about money, I bought everything here used. I like to go to pawn shops and then there's a fairly large music retailer where I live that also does rentals. So 
For the Yamahas with the stands, I paid 500 Canadian for them. I paid $200 for the WXC50, again Canadian. 15 bucks for the uh, radio tuner. And that's only necessary because where I'm at, I don't have internet access. So I just, that's a, a solution for me. Anyway, most people would not buy that. They save that RCA input for something else on the uh, WXC50, which also plays USB audio. So if you have USB stick, you can stick it in there and play it. Although it would be quite cumbersome if you didn't have the internet in order to use the app. So keep that in mind. Um, other than that, so we for the uh, Yorkville sub, I paid uh, $2.99 for it. I was looking at a couple at the store. Their new ones were like $4.20. They had a used one for $3.80. And uh, I said, well, if it's only going to be like a $40 difference, put the used one away and go get me the new one. They couldn't find a new one, so they ended up cutting another hundred dollars off of this thing. So I think I paid two ninety nine for it for a ten inch two hundred and fifty watt sub, and it's a professional piece of equipment. This one has been rented a hundred and ten days. It could have sat in someone's restaurant or something for a few months and got a good workout or whatever. I don't know, but it's got a three month warranty, so. That's the way I like to buy audio equipment is to buy better stuff used. And then I've got all powered equipment, right? So you could get 19 inch rack amps, like you can get a, a thousand watt head to run a pair of speakers, but then you're starting to take up a lot of space and you need to like pay more attention to what you're doing with uh, connecting things up with the, so with the 400i, Basically, I've got a uh, TRS cable that goes out to sub output into the sub. It has a bunch of unbalanced or balanced connections and through connections and everything on there. So it's quite versatile. It can take pretty much anything you give it. The girl that demoed it to me in their store just hooked up her phone with an eighth inch jack going into a quarter inch jack on the back and it worked great. So obviously it's only going to play bass, right? I don't know what kind of crossover is in that sub, but because I have a crossover built in my mixer, I'm good to go. Everything works. <clears throat> it's my understanding that there's some issues with the uh, Yamaha 400i compression drivers that come in them stock. So those, actually the speaker on the uh, left, I've replaced the compression driver on it after I bought it. And uh, I put in an upgraded one which has its drawbacks and benefits for that because they're only 12 watt compression drivers. I put in a 25 watt and its uh, sensitivity was like 2 dB higher. To the human ear at listening volumes in this location, it seems like it's fine. But if you were <clears throat> out on this making money with these speakers, you might want to use some test equipment to verify that it's doing what you want to do before you go and mobilize with uh, different compression drivers in it. But they used to use a uh, two M6 screws on a three inch bolt circle. But you can't go any deeper than what's in there unless you want to extend the case, which is what I've done. So I've extended the back of the case where the halves meet by about an eighth of an inch to make that work. And uh, I'm starting to ramble now, but I think that's about all I want to say. Like if you just want to listen to music, the 400i with the sub is enough. You can plug your inputs into the mixer. We'll take a look at that quickly. Just disconnecting the camera here. And then I could get my guitar out and I could play along with this thing if I wanted to, if I was that good of a player. But anyway, <laughs> they have a high impedance input. They've got regular inputs, mic inputs. So pretty much, all the inputs you want. Like, I don't know if you can hear the fan running in this thing or not, but that could be annoying if it's inside of your home, depending on what you're using. Like my practice amp doesn't have a, a fan in it, so it's a bit nicer. As far as that goes, you can control, you can knock out the bass if you're just speaking, so you're not booming when you're talking and whatnot, or you can play ba bass boost, and there's a bunch of different options here, right? 
and you can put a pedal on it for reverb. So you can uh, listen to music, you can jam with it, you can gig with it, you can put on a, a show, you can bring it to your church, place of worship, or whatever. There's lots of options for it, and it's pretty powerful. Then the, like the WXC50, it's got uh, a sub out there, but I'm not using that. The only thing I don't like about the WXC is that it doesn't have a um, balanced outputs on it. Like it's it's home grade level, but it's got like a very good signal to noise ratio. So it, the SNR is good on it, but then this thing has other things. So I wish Yamaha made it like a, something a little more professional. I'm sure they do, but uh, I just buy whatever is available. And then for the speakers, they just use a quarter inch speaker cable. They come with like some long red and black molded cables that look kind of disgusting. So I just got some shorter ones to go on there. The uh, mixer sits in there and I just keep my receipts taped to my equipment. Because I buy it used and if it turns out it's stolen or something, at least I got proof that I bought it from a business. Um, and then there's not much to say about this. I was shocked at what like consumer grade AV and audio equipment is selling for nowadays. Like I did not plan to buy any professional audio equipment, but like when you start looking at like a high power stereo amp, like people want a lot of money for it. And like I said, you got to redo the capacitors on them and everything. It just didn't make any sense to buy something old when you could just buy something new that you can service if you have to without a lot of effort. And it's not gigantic, doesn't take up a bunch of space. So that's uh, kind of the route that I went for with the garage. I'm really happy with it. I was surprised how much bass this little guy puts out. It's perfect for where I'm at. I guess we can take a look at the back of it. And it's it's light, right? Like if you want to go into like a 3,000 watt sub, <laughs> you can, but they're going to be a couple thousand bucks, and they're going to be like heavy and gigantic. So you can see it's got the XLR connector, it's got the uh, quarter inch slash uh, XLR on the left for mono. It's got the volume level control. It's got high pass output with the 80 hertz crossover on it so it can process the signal for you a little bit the older stuff wouldn't do any of that so uh... Yeah. I would say keep it in mind if you want to have audio in your garage to check out your pawn shops and the uh, rental equipment shops and see what you can find so thank you for watching